Bonsoir et bienvenue pour nos programmes News Extra. Dans ce programme, nous suivons sa conférence La Fresse, qui est la force défense Cécile et garde la côte américaine et nous donne suivant sa surveillance conjointe qui s'est fait dans la mer Cécile. Et nous aussi comptons plus le bon point qui le président Ramkalawan il met devant pour la conférence du bon ministre de la Santé, du bon petit asile de la région de l'Afrique. Suivant l'accord qui s'est signé avec l'Amérique en 2021 pour lutte contre le crime le lendemain, la force défense Cécile et garde la côte américaine qui fait une surveillance conjointe de l'Amérique et Cécile. Huit bateaux de la peste ont été inspectés et suivant sa mission le lendemain, garde la côte américaine et la force défense Cécile qui fait une conférence de la presse. Aussi, quand sa conférence de la presse, qui est chargé d'affaires, l'ambassade américaine ici Cécile. The mission itself is in main fact is to detect, deter illegal transnational crimes. Basically, we concentrated more on uh, drug trafficking, IUU, and illegal migration inside the Seychelles EZ. The role is to intercept uh, Seychelles flagged vessels and conduct boarding and inspection on board these vessels. Our missions were mostly uh, intelligence based. That is, uh, we collaborated with our Maritime Operations Center. We also had uh, the presence of Interpol among us and uh, agents from the Seychelles Fishing Authority. And through uh, um, monitoring of uh, online platforms were also done through the MOC and we were also assisted by uh, SFA and SMSE as well. So this is the main part of our EZ, as you can see in blue, we could not cover the whole of EZ for the duration of the patrol, which was uh, eight days. Therefore, we concentrated in mostly two areas. The northern part, just above Dennis Island and Bird Island, the northern patrol area. And then we had the southern patrol area. Basically, it was below De Wash Island, across to Il Plat all the southern part and we were guided uh, by the maritime operations center on the uh, whereabouts of the fishing vessel where it was mostly concentrated and uh, the vessel used was saya de mala it's an auxiliary vessel and we had on board we had the scg crew members we had uh, also three special forces personnel from the Taza. We also had eight United States uh, Coast Guard tactical law enforcement team. We had two agents from the Seychelles Fisheries Authority and we had one personnel from the Seychelles Maritime Safety Authority who were on board the vessel as well. And now uh, while we were doing our patrol, uh, firstly we had interaction with our Maritime Operations Center where they guided us to the local uh, fishing vessels that were at sea. And then we had to confirm that the vessel is really Seychelles flagged. We confirmed the name and the POB on board, the personnel on board the, the vessels. And then we had to request permission to board. And then of course we deployed a small vessel, small boat, with the tactical team and with the Seychelles boarding team on board. We did the boarding, secure the vessel, conduct the search, And then uh, we invited SFA and SMSA to board as well for inspection and verification of other documents. And these are some of the vessels we boarded. And uh, in fact, it is one of the few times we board such uh, large vessels while patrolling at sea. And then after the boardings were done, there is a debrief that is carried out on board the vessel. And uh, basically, we We provide uh, inputs and uh, benefits for, for the next boarding yeah? to see where we went wrong, how we can uh, fix the next boarding to make it uh, a better one. And then we also carried out certain team building activities. Uh, we did live firing at sea. And then we had a push-up competition, which was quite interesting. Just to conclude, we did seven days at sea and we did a total of eight boardings. And we also uh, did a thorough monitoring of our EZ through the online platforms, through MOC and also the Interpol, which assisted greatly for the exercise. At the first U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit in December 2022, President Biden underscored the U.S. commitment to partnering with the Seychelles people on a number of core issues of mutual interest, including regional security, 
trade, environmental preservation, and educational exchange. The President set a goal for the United States to continue to work toward strengthening the established friendly partnerships between the United States and Seychelles and other countries in the region, including by advancing our mutual security interests, strengthening our economic and trade ties, and advancing our common democratic values. The Biden administration sees African countries, including Seychelles, as partners in pursuing our shared global and regional priorities. From ending the COVID-19 pandemic and building back to a more inclusive global economy, meeting the climate challenge, building resilience while creating opportunities in clean energy and climate sustainability, advancing democracy and promoting respect for human rights around the world, and working towards peace and security. We've had some notable successes over the last 12 months with new opportunities for two-way trade, U.S. Embassy support for Seychellois businesses to explore U.S. products, and knowledge transfers, leading U.S. experts in support of Seychelles' budding aquaculture industry. And I would be remiss not to mention the reopening of U.S. Embassy Victoria last June. We were thrilled to welcome President Ram Kalawan, Foreign Minister Radigand, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Richard Verma, and others to the ceremony marking this important occasion, a sign of the strong partnership between our two countries. On security cooperation, we have worked with our Seychelles partners for many years, including the last 14 iterations of Cutlass Express and the salvage operation run with the U.S. Coast Guard and the Port Authority in December 2022. The bilateral military operations that conclude this week are a direct result of the bilateral agreement on countering illicit transnational maritime activity operations that was signed between the United States and the Seychelles government in July 2021. Our cooperation on maritime security is a visible sign of our mutual goal of a more secure and prosperous Indian Ocean region. It gives me enormous satisfaction to know that Seychelles and the United States continue to work side by side, demonstrating great dedication, courage, and sacrifice to ensure the safety and security of our maritime spaces. We know that no one nation can address the threats present in the world today alone. Since 2011, we have operated together through 14 iterations of the Cutlass Express exercise series. As joint partners with the Combined Maritime Forces, we have sailed together side by side, promoting security, stability, and prosperity across more than 8 million square kilometers of international waters that encompass some of the world's most important shipping lanes. With the resurgence of piracy and conflict in the Red Sea, it is apparent that the waters of the Indian Ocean remain vulnerable to a wide range of transnational threats, including smuggling, terrorism, and piracy. These types of attacks in and on our shipping lanes not only affect the innocent crews of our vessels and ships, but they also harm ordinary people worldwide by increasing the cost of essential goods such as food, medicine, and fuel. This challenge is especially acute for small island developing states like Seychelles, which rely heavily on free and open sea lanes for the necessities of life. It is our responsibility as nations and as members of the global community to ensure the seas remain safe for our mariners and continue to deliver the benefits of the blue economy to the citizenry of our nations. This is why initiatives like the Combined Maritime Forces, the bilateral law enforcement agreement signed between our two countries in 2021, and our partnership with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime are so important. As we head into the future, the United States will continue to support Seychelles by transferring defense articles and services via the Foreign Military Financing Program, implementing a significant security cooperation initiative for maritime domain awareness in the Western Indian Ocean, conducting assessments and sharing information to support institutional capacity building, sending dozens of students to the United States for professional military education, and conducting subject matter expert exchanges right here in Seychelles. The bilateral maritime law enforcement agreement between the United States and Seychelles made the combined operation we are here to commemorate today possible. It enabled the U.S. Coast Guard to deploy a law enforcement detachment to Seychelles waters and address our mutual maritime security goals shoulder to shoulder with our Seychelles Defense Forces counterparts. As I conclude, I would like to commend Seychelles for its prominent role in the global fight against piracy and other illicit maritime activities. Seychelles has called upon its strengths as an island state and shown a pronounced determination to contribute to international efforts to address maritime security threats. The international community has recognized Seychelles' contributions, and your country continues to be a valued partner in the effort towards global maritime security.
Seychelles internationally, there have been many questions nationally in terms of the role of Seychelles in this operation. And internationally, Seychelles has faced quite a number of backlash in terms of why is Seychelles partnering in this kind of operation and, and, and the role of that operation within the wider geopolitical dynamics. So I would like to understand from the U.S. side, do you feel in terms of a small country like the Seychelles, its vulnerability, do you feel that the fact that Seychelles was named amongst those 10 countries partnering in this operation exposed Seychelles unnecessarily? I would like to understand the perspective of the U.S., whether it was a smart, wise decision from the onset. Thank you. Well, I think we can all agree that the, the safety of international waters is integral to the well-being of our citizens and our countries in the region, and that uh, we, we uh, greatly appreciate the role that all the partner nations have played in this region, and everybody has a different role to play. Uh, in terms of Seychelles contributions, we understand that it's a small country, but it's a, just as vital a partner as any of the others in the region. So we're very grateful to the information sharing and, and the support that we've gotten from this country. So it's something that we all have to do working together as a team. But in terms of the geopolitical view and, and uh, the view uh, from the region, I'd say that even the smallest country has an important role to play because the more uh, cooperation we have in the coalition, the stronger we are together. En termes de l'inspection que vous avez fait, le lendemain, pour avoir huit bateaux, est-ce qu'ils ont tiré aucune résistance? Um, et moi, si on a même bateau tant qu'ils ont tiré bord, est-ce qu'ils ont tiré pour ce bateau? Bien les autres bateaux, est-ce qu'ils ont aucun la fouille qu'ils ont tiré si fait? Donc, expliquez-moi hier ça, tu l'as oublié? Et aussi, moi, j'avais un content de comprendre quoi qui continue à un bon défi plus pertinent en termes de surveillance maritime pour ces sites. Bon boarding, tu as fait très bien par toute l'équipe. Euh, premièrement, nous n'avons pas aucune résistance sur le côté PC à cause de nous faire l'idée de façon qui nous nous respecte bon PC, ok, l'eau la mer. Euh, nous demandons une permission avant, ça tout le temps nous fait, ok. Et après le temps nous montons à bord, team Cécile. Nous disons pour dire avec nous, il y en a aussi euh, un personnel américain qui pour là pour board euh, pour assister nous dans ce boarding. Hmm? Nous ne pouvons pas faire les à sans aucun regard pour notre euh, sécurité. Bien si nous prenons tout ça là en compte et nous, nous, nous euh, expliquons bien quoi qui peut arriver. Et, et la fouille, oui, la fouille, il y a fait avec notre consentement. Nous n'avons pas rien qui a fait. Sans autre consentement. Tout quelque chose est déroulé correct, nous n'avons pas gagné quelque chose illégal. Tout le monde est en ordre. Nous avons un IZ avec un asset qui nous a un petit peu minime pour couvrir entier, mais seulement nous faisons de façon effective. Ça veut dire, par exemple, nous avons une opération et plutôt une intelligence based. Okay? Nous avons une plateforme qui nous est capable de monitorer un peu nos IZ entiers. Nous sommes capables de vérifier. Nous avons trafic maritime qui est et qui sort dans les lots de l'OCC. Nous avons ça aussi qui, qui, qui peut assister nous euh, pour nous euh, maintenir et liger le nous entier. Nous mettons tous les procédures qui nous permettent de faire quelque chose et nous avons fait pour nous autres. Okay? Et là, nous comparons euh, nous avons qui nous sommes capables d'arranger pour nous. Et nous aussi, nous avons fait quelque chose avec nous. Hein? Et nous avons fait tous les. Tous les parti ni bénéficier de ça de ça l'exercice il pas fait première fois nous fait il fait deuxième fois première fois là nous tu fait nous nous parti invite SF SMS Interpol aussi parti parti là-dedans et nous voit euh quand nous capable extendre nous l'opération un peu plus grand invite un peu plus de monde refine un peu nous nous façon faire et là résultat aujourd'hui nous on gagne sens participe avec bande les autres euh, entités sa semaine, nous avons le ministre de la Santé, le ministre de l'Asile dans la région de l'Afrique, ensemble avec WHO, qui a besoin ici Cécile pour discuter qui moyens sont capables de plus bien préparer en cas de l'autre pandémie et qui moyens pour rendre le système de la santé beaucoup plus efficace. C'est le président Ram Kalawan qui a fait un discours ouvert à sa conférence. On nous écoute le point que le président Ram Kalawan a mis devant. Let me start by stating that uh, from our common point of view, 
as citizens of small island developing states with uh, so many aspirations and so many vulnerabilities, nothing is more crucial in this rapidly evolving world than for us to have a strong voice. To have a voice that resonates loudly and clearly wherever critical decisions that affect us directly or indirectly are made. As somebody who chairs the environment section of the SEEDS, I get to know and I get to meet ministers of environment. And I know the issues that we talk about. And at all international conferences, when we talk about resources, we know that we are not looked at properly. And especially in the African region, when we talk about this, the African seeds, we know that it's those seeds that always do better, be it in governance, be it in democracy. For example, when we look at the Mo Ibrahim Index, it's always Cabo Verde, Mauritius, Seychelles, one, two, three. And we keep, uh, we compete against each other, but we prove that uh, within the African continent, we are achieving. And again, when Dr. Moeti mentioned the COVID pandemic, again, on the African continent, it was the seeds that led the way forward. At one point, I know Seychelles was not only competing within Africa, but we were first worldwide showing the commitment. And so I dare say that as small island developing states, the commitment is 100%. And as islands, as islanders rather, when we talk to each other, there's a very clear language. Whether it's in Portuguese or in French or in Creole or in whichever language, we understand each other because islands have a special affinity. And maybe, Dr. Moeti, this is why sometimes when islands speak to each other or when islands participate in continental meetings, sometimes we don't really feel that we are part of it because there's something special about us islands. Maybe it's the, the sand, the sea, and the coconut trees or whatever else. But uh, the important thing is we have to stand with one voice. And whilst we are putting forward the MVI, the Multidimensional Vulnerability Index, and fighting for it, we are not doing it simply because we want access to, to easy money. We do not want to take the grants from other developing countries, other countries that are still on the way to making it, so to speak. But we are simply saying that our progress, our unity, must not be hampered by the fact that we have used these resources properly. And when we do not have access to concessional funding, when we have to fight our way and, and be treated in the way we are simply because we are labeled as high income, we say this has got to change. Because we are, however much we have achieved, we remain vulnerable. COVID was not, for example, an environment disaster. But our economies suffered greatly. Overnight, 80% of our various economies was destroyed. So we will keep fighting for the multidimensional vulnerability index. We will continue to fight for access to concessional funding because, again, as part of the WHO agenda, as part of our health agenda, we've got to look at health in a global manner. What happens in education, what happens in the health sector, what happens at the, at the social levels, in the communities, are all interlinked. 
And if our economies are not doing well, then there is no way we will be able to make the valuable contribution in order to give our people the very best. So let us stick together and make our voices heard in a, in a very loud way. It has been said that uh, small island developing states are in the crossfires of many crises, and this is true. The impact of COVID-19 on our countries continues to be felt today as we grapple with new challenges, and these include the climate crisis, again as mentioned by Dr. Moeti, the torrential rains, and I mentioned that to a reporter earlier, this, uh, earlier last week. I said, at this point in time, Seychelles should not be in its rainy season. By now, rains should have stopped. In fact, we should be preparing ourselves for droughts rather than more rain. But what do we see? We see a lot of rain. And with the rain, we see floods. We see our populations being affected. So all these are things that we are feeling. Coastal erosion, and yesterday before the start of the walk, I did say to all our visitors that what we are seeing is a result of climate change. We never before, at no time, did we never have a beach at Beauvalon. But now, with high tides going up to two meters, and especially when it's full moon, the beach is no longer there. And this in itself also brings with it extra expenses. Money that could be used to facilitate our health facilities, education, have now got to be transferred to protecting our coast, to protecting the livelihood of our people. And so as SIDS, we are, we are there in the center of uh, so many of these emergencies. And of course, the result is more strains on our peoples and our health systems. And therefore, we are all concerned. In the health healthcare center, many crucial decisions need to be made every day. The vagaries of climate change and health and the frantic efforts to achieve universal health coverage, the imperatives of pandemic preparedness and response, the substance abuse vortex, the obstinate surge of the obesity pandemic and its consequences on our populations and health systems, and a whole range of other critical health challenges demand that we speak as one now more than ever, because it's interlinked. What one can do to help another, what one island state can, can help in giving advice and in providing certain resources is even more crucial today than it was yesterday. And of course, as seeds, as the saying goes, it is imperative for the seeds to be heard at the table to make our voices heard at the table. Because if we are not heard at the table, we will be on the menu and we will be consumed. Coming together like this, face to face, heart to heart, in kindred spirit, presents yet another opportunity for us to harmonize and unify our positions and ultimately amplify our voice. That is why the meeting of the Ministers of Health, of the SEEDS, is so consequential. That is why Seychelles is so proud and feels so privileged to be hosting this meeting for the third time. Thank you all for being here this week and thank you for giving Seychelles the opportunity to host you. Thank you to Cabo Verde for passing the baton to Seychelles but also thank you for the leadership that you showed during the five years where you were the ones leading the organization. We are, of course, extremely honored to welcome 
the regional director of the African region of WHO, Dr. Moeti, to Seychelles. I know it is not your first time, and, but this time you went a little further instead of saying on Mahe. You also had the chance to visit uh, other islands, or you will be visiting other islands. But uh, I would like to say we welcome you back in your capacity, of course, as regional director of the African region of WHO. But more importantly, we welcome you back as a true friend of Seychelles and rest assured that we are looking forward to welcoming you with Mr. and with the girls it's for you to have the perfect holiday. And uh, I take uh, this opportunity to thank you and the World Health Organization for its steadfast support to Seychelles over, over several decades of collaboration. WHO, of course, is strongly represented here in the Seychelles. And uh, again, as we know, we just signed an exciting new biennial plan of action for the years 2024 and 2025. Seychelles looks forward to the implementation of the new Seychelles WHO country cooperation strategy. Ministers, heads of delegations, I know that this week uh, you will be taking some far-reaching decisions on a wide range of issues. Key among them will be the outstanding decisions of unpooled procurement. And here I also wish to congratulate and thank all of you who have been involved in making sure that this project moves ahead. And we will also be looking at which country will host the secretariat for, of this pioneering joint initiative. The work that we have done together with the indefatigable support of the original office to jointly procure quality drugs and clinical supplies is truly remarkable. Thank you for that work. We now need to push to the finishing line and achieve what the initiative intended to achieve, that is, better prices so that ultimately we get to doing much more with our limited resources. The effort that you have undertaken in the area of pool procurement is a lesson in itself. It clearly demonstrates that when seeds come together, what they can achieve. And where there is a will to achieve something magnificent, we can do so. And so the question that immediately comes up is, what more? What else can we do together? After more than 18 years of working together, the SEEDS group of health ministers of the WHO region of Africa need to ask ourselves some fundamental existential questions. We cannot leave this meeting without having addressed the future orientations of this vibrant movement to improve the health and well-being among the SEEDS population of Africa. I have heard many ideas about the potential of setting up a permanent health sector secretariat for the SEEDS. How feasible is this an idea? Can it be explored? Would such a secretariat enhance collaboration, further intensify our voices, and enable the SEEDS of Africa to more effectively tap into the international opportunities that exist. These are all ideas that need to be deeply explored. And I pray that you take your time and explore such ideas as a way for us SEEDS to move forward and remembering that as we move forward, the African continent will be moving together with us. And if we, as seeds that have already proved our worth on the African continent, if we can be the lighthouse that sheds the light and gives the direction, I commend you to go into that direction. This meeting is being held in Seychelles exactly two months before the fourth international seeds meeting, which will be held in St. John's, Antigua, and Bermuda. Bermuda, 
in May 2024 under the theme, Charting the Course Towards Resilient Prosperity. Each time the seeds meet, progress is achieved. Progress is visible and palpable. The Samoa pathway, the Mauritius strategy, and the Barbados program of action, and every meeting or initiative in between have enabled our voices to resonate more loudly and effectively internationally, and has also permitted us to convert the energy from that amplification into concrete actions on the ground. Speaking for Seychelles, we are slowly but surely making significant progress towards the sustainable development goals, but there are still many challenges to overcome, just like in all of our island states. All eyes are now set on the Antigua meeting, when SIDS will review their progress towards sustainable development and propose a new decade of partnership as well as solutions to boost our path to resilient prosperity. And may I here say that the theme you have chosen for this week's meeting is very fitting, progress towards the sustainable development goals. From the African perspective and from the health sector perspective, can this meeting here, this week, serve to strengthen the political declaration and the plan of action that will emerge from the Antigua Conference? Why not? I know that this is something that you will explore and I really urge you to do so. Ministers, heads of delegations, experts of the World Health Organization, health professionals from here and everywhere, you and I have noble and notable missions to accomplish. We are in this together, bound by the same desire and the same mandate given by those we serve to achieve universal health coverage, to stimulate much needed protection from health emergencies for our peoples, and ultimately to improve the health and well-being of everyone. We know the strategies that work. There is ample evidence. That is why the government of Seychelles continually invests heavily on building our human capital, on strengthening our health system, and in supercharging the social determinants of health. I am sure we will continue to share with each other and learn from each other what more we can do, both on our own and together, in order to fulfill our mandates. I wish you all the very best uh, during this week's uh, critical deliberations, and I end by thank you, thanking you all for the vital work you do for the people of Africa and for the people of our small island developing states. C'est le programme News Extra, zoen nou sa zedi pou an lot program kod nou pou regard plan detay, ban sizek ki domine l'actualité sa semaine. Merci pou suiv.